I've had to cut a couple of broads off. Man. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little spicy in my tongue. I know. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. You, uh, please, do you. Feel free. Um, but I've had to cut some people off just because they're they didn't have ambition. They didn't have a mission. They didn't right, have a right. path where they were going. Yeah. And I don't care what your path is, as long as it's going somewhere. If you're evolving yourself, if you're mm -hmm. elevating the conversations, if you're like. <laughs> Hey, welcome to Uncommon State of Mind, where we debate different ways to leverage your next investment to create time freedom, legacy impact, and generational wealth, so you can live that uncommon life. But in order to do that, you must be uncommon. My name is Joey, aka Mr. J Mays. Hey, and I'm AD, also known as AD the Fly Realtor. What's good? Yep, yep. So, AD, uh, obviously <laughs> we're in a new, new location. Uh, we're usually uh, in my in our Palmdale location. We're uh, somewhere different because we are interviewing some beautiful people today. So, AD, go ahead. Yeah, so with us today, we got Nia Randall and Nia Hall, also known as Nia 1 and 2. They're the founders behind Black Girls Buy Buildings. Uh, thank you, ladies. We appreciate that you came to meet with us. Yep. We're thank very excited. for having us. So, I actually have a question for y'all. Um, we started. Been, okay, hello. Yeah, it's been, right no, honestly, nice to meet you too. Been, you know, I'm Joey, J Mr. J. Mays. But um, how, who decided who was Nia 1 and who was Nia 2? Mm. Okay, so quick story. We've okay. known each other since grammar school, mm -hmm. um, so, like third or fourth grade. Oh, wow. um, but she is one year older than me. Uh, yeah, okay. So I think we're like... 17 months apart to the day. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, same birthday? So I'm July 29th. And I'm October 29th. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, can't be the same birthday. Yeah, um, so yeah, she's Nia 1 because she's a tiny bit older. Okay. Than Nia 2. There's a tiny. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Clarify. So, okay, next question. <laughs> Don't who, play her. So, though that you're a little older, who acts like they're older? <laughs> I'm your auntie. I'm your grandma. I care everything you do. Okay. That's cool. I'm sending notes. I'm sending follow ups. Yes. Yes. Watch yourself, baby. What you doing? That's totally me. Okay. That makes sense. Makes sense. That's cool. So, can you guys uh, like just take turns letting us know a little bit about yourselves, your backgrounds, yeah. and how you ended up here? Absolutely. Um, I'll go first since I'm Nia, number one. So Nia, number one, um, also known as Nia Randall. Um, so I have a background in marketing. Um, actually, we we both do. Um, so kind of how Black Girls Buy Buildings came to be is um, during the pandemic, I um, got laid off from my job, and we had talked about buying a building together for years, probably since, like, high school. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was like, okay, I, you know, I have this money saved, and, um, like, this is the time. You know, interest rates at that point were, like, 2.5%. Right. Um, so it was like... Yeah. Got to get it while it's hot. Um, so I was calling her like almost every day at that point, like sending her buildings and, um, you know, constantly asking questions because she had already gone through this process like twice at this point. Oh, okay. And uh, bought my first building and just kind of documenting like what happened and um, all the ups and downs. And then we were drinking wine one day mm. and came uh -oh. up with. Oh, <laughs> 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 He's right, nice. go I gotta keep my eye on Okay. <laughs> my fault, my fault. Continue. I got my eye on you. Um, but yeah, so we came up with Black Girls by Buildings and we started an IG page and just kind of started posting like motivational stuff. And, okay. Um, you know, like kind of black woman empowerment. That was really our focus initially. Um, and just talking about our personal experience when it came to real estate. Um, and then it just kind of took over from from there yeah. and became this this thing. I'll let you. Yeah. Um, so I bought my first um, condo in 2015. I've okay. always wanted to own property, right? My mom owned her house and my, that was my thing. It's like I need to buy something when I felt like I could do so. Mm -hmm. um, so I moved to Houston. I bought my first condo. I bought a house. And there were so many times where my friends or family would call and be like, okay, Nia, so what happened? What did you do? What did you, what did you do? Uh, or I would tell them like, hey, girl, are you investing? Like, what your next step? What are you going to do with this money that you're saving? What's your, you know, what's your game plan? Right. And so it just became a natural conversation of like, let's buy buildings together. Let's educate women. Let's be resourceful for women. Unfortunately, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the disparities that African Americans in general have with ownership, that number is even less for women sometimes, right? right. And so it's like, come on, girl, we can do this, right? We say to ourselves all the time, we are black, we are girls, and we buy buildings. There and that's honestly what we do. I like that. Um, 
and I, that was going to be my next question is like, what made you guys really want to segment into black women specifically? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you kind of gave us a little bit of insight on that. Yeah. And that's just, I'm guessing that's like more of like your mission statement for like life yeah, right now. Absolutely. It's so <laughs> wild when we were starting to have these conversations and kind of build this brand, we were watching the news one day and Chicago has a tax sale every couple of years. Mm, okay. um, they don't do it every month like Houston does. They do it every couple of years. And some of the statistics came out where, you know, let's say 70% of the people that were in this tax sale were elderly. Mm, and out of okay. those elderly people, a large percentage of those people are losing their homes for three thousand dollars or wow. less, right? Oh, okay. And so when you think about who um, are the ma matriarchs of the family, who really makes sure that families are okay and together, who makes sure that you know your grandma is the one to tell you to come over for Sunday dinner, right? Your mom is the one to make sure you get ready for school. So why aren't the women making sure that they have the properties to, you know? build their families, make sure they keep their families together. So to us, I just thought about like all the women in our lives that wanted to accomplish something and felt they couldn't or felt like they didn't have the time or didn't have the support. Right. It's like, no, girl, we, we are supportive of each other, mm -hmm. right? This my this my bottom bitch, not to be real. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, I will support her through anything. Right. And we and found, hands. yeah, and we found that so many women want to do this, but they don't feel supported at home. Mm, right. And so it's like, girl, look, let's call, let's talk, let's mm -hmm. chat, let's text, let's do whatever we need to do to make sure you have the information, to make mm -hmm. sure you feel empowered, and you actually have an action plan to get some shit done. Yeah. You know, that's so interesting that you said, like, a lot of women, black women specifically, want to buy properties, want to buy homes, but they don't know how mm -hmm. or they don't feel supported. My wife, she's a, a maternal infant health worker, mm -hmm. specifically, like, geared towards black women. And that's another issue in that field yeah. also where mm -hmm. they don't feel the support to breastfeed. They don't feel the Absolutely. support to whatever it may be. So I find that so crazy that it's so many avenues it's like black women just happen to lack this yeah. support that to so many other demographics, it just comes naturally. Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like resources is another thing, right? We, our communities lack resources. We mm -hmm. lack resources, right? And I think the biggest thing for me was like, well, how am I going to pay for a house? How am I going to, you know, save up for a down payment? I have all these other things, right? And then I found out because I was ear hustling one of my coworkers, right? And she was talking about how she was going through a divorce and she was going to withdraw money from her 401k. Mm. And I was like, you can do that? So, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then it was, so then I, I like call Fidelity. Um, also, this was, again, pandemic times, right? So you could do withdrawals with no penalty no at that penalty, time. No penalty, right. Okay. So I called, I said, um, and this was before I got laid off. I mean, we all knew that what was coming but i said like i'm get, i'm um, laid off i want to take withdraw x amount of dollars and they didn't ask me for any type of verification nothing nice. <laughs> within three business days i had those funds in my account and i had already saved money because i was planning on leaving anyway right uh -huh. um so now i have this huge lump sum of money so it's like boom okay i'm gonna use this for my down payment and then i still have this like cushion to fall back on but could I still have achieved the same goal? Yes. But now I have another extra X amount of dollars that if I wanted to do something else with that, right. I could. And thankfully that I did it that way because I didn't work for, you know, the world was shut down for a year. Yeah. And then I didn't work for another two years after that. Right. So it it all worked out. Divine timing, God, whatever you want to you know say. But I think the resources is a big part because there are grant programs and um, a lot of banks offer, you know, certain funding that is just for minorities and things like that. But how, like, how do you know, right? Yeah, Unless somebody exactly. like points you in that direction yeah. or, you know, tells you like, hey, girl, like, go check. Like, who do you bank with? Oh, I heard they have this, this and this. Mm -hmm. Right. So I feel like our platform, we're really pushing the education piece to mm -hmm. to let people know, like everything. Every state is different. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rules are different. We're, as she was talking about the tax sale. Right. And. All the, you know, county and city, state, everything is different. But trying to find women and like-minded, you know, not just women, because a lot of men follow us as well, but just people of color that have the same mission and are looking to 
extend support, right? Mm-hmm. We have like lenders that reach out to us, like, hey, if anybody has a question, feel free to to have them call me, right? Oh, okay. And cool. this is like, hey, because we don't have all the answers either, right? I don't know. I'm not a mortgage person. I don't. I don't. Or I don't really. I can give you information, but I don't know the ins and outs of of right. everything. Yeah. So yeah. things change all the time. Too. Yeah. yeah, I, I feel yeah. like trying to make sure that we can build a community where we are your go-to place for resources like mm-hmm. nice. that's that's ultimately our our newest mission if you will yeah that's awesome cool. so uh, that's cool it sounds like you guys are like uh you know like home you know what I'm saying? Like home base, whenever they want. You want to like... do a shameless plug? <laughs> uh, we, we do have some merch. I, I just want to quickly turn around and see if y'all can see mine. So we call ourselves Home Girls. Oh, y'all get it? Uh, ah, okay. ah, Play on words. I like home. that. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know if y'all saw that. Let that yeah. marketing show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Girls. Home yeah. Girls. But go ahead. Oh, sorry. man. So I plugged y'all right in. <laughs> right. That's okay. that, that half supposed to work, man. All right. Exactly. Um, what was I going to say now? I forgot. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Nah, no, you're good. Um, but yes, we are home girls, right? Yes. We are those girls. It's like, hey, you want to grab some wine and talk about some investments? Mm. Honestly, at this point in my life, I don't have no friends that I gossip with. You know what? Nice. I I love the fact that you said that because that's the thing. At at a specific age, you should have friends that you're always plotting to rule to, to figure out how to how absolutely. to conquer the world with. Yes, you know absolutely. what I mean. And it, it just it just makes life so much easier. Yeah, I've had to cut a couple of broads off. Man. <laughs> I'm a little spicy in my tongue. I know you, no, no, it's okay. Yeah. You, uh, please do you. Free. Um, but I've had to cut some people off just because they're they didn't have ambition. They didn't have a mission. They didn't right, have a right. path where they were going. Yeah. And I don't care what your path is, as long as it's going somewhere. If you're evolving yourself, if you're mm-hmm. elevating the conversations, if you're like doing things to set yourself up for a future. Right. Yeah. And you know, not to be rude to anybody, but but there are some things in my life and our lives that we just don't get down with, right? We don't want to waste our time yeah. doing those things that are not going to, you know, build us up, build our families up. Um, I'm somebody's auntie. I have multiple nieces and nephews. Right. And that's my biggest thing is like, what type of legacy am I leaving for them? I don't right, want to have yeah. children, right? So mm-hmm. that part of the conversation is not really relevant to me, but I still have people in my life that watch me, that care for me, that support me, and I know I can lay a foundation for. Got I like you. That. Got I like you. That. Um, question for Nia one. So when you got laid off, uh, or prior to you getting laid off, like what, I mean, what was your mindset, you know, prior to you getting laid off, knowing that you're about to get, this is about to happen. And, you know, cause most people in that situation aren't thinking like, man, okay, I need to invest. Most people are like, I need to go find another job so that or I can, you money. know, so I could mm-hmm. stay afloat. So what thought process did you have during that time that led you to, you know, becoming an investor? Yeah. Um, so I, like I said, I had thought about it for some time. Um, I knew the the short answer is the interest rate is what really like mm-hmm. made me pull the trigger because I knew that I might not ever see something this low in my lifetime again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I have lived some years and I, Interest rates have fluctuated over time, but like something in the single digits like that, it was like, okay, this my I don't think it's gonna get any lower. Right. And I feel like if I don't buy something now, like yeah, I could wait and I have been waiting, right? But then what what will happen if I can't afford it anymore because now it's too high? Right. Yeah. So I think that was my the the main thing that like just made me like rip the band-aid off. Um, it was definitely scary. Uh-huh. And I was like fighting the the clock, right? Because I knew what my end date was going to be at my job and my closing uh, got kept getting man. pushed out right so it was pushed out like almost three weeks and i'm like you know they asked for the verification and i'm like i'm like okay uh you know i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready and um all these little hiccups kept happening um so i literally closed one day before my last day of work that's yeah. what's up and so I, they didn't ask for the verification until the day before closing. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Because yeah. it's like at this point, I didn't want to do this whole process. Yeah. And I was Looked like, at buildings. I would I would hate paperwork. for this to yeah. just like slip through my fingers exactly. off of a technicality at that point. Right. Because yeah. I worked for this company for over eight years. Wow. And it's like now you're going to tell me like, oh, well, now you can't <laughs> get it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. OK, so. The next thing that I want to ask you is, is um, prior to that, because obviously you've been educating yourself um, prior to that that you know time in your life. So what 
um, what were you feeding yourself? Like, what information were you feeding yourself prior to you even, you know, making that a thought in your head? Like, okay, now that I have this opportunity, I'm going to take take advantage of it. Like, what information were you gathering mm. prior to that? Mm, that is a great <laughs> question. Um, I feel like it was more fear-based. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, but not even, though, because uh, something that you guys don't know is Nia's grandmother... Her name is Bobby Jean. When I, she's 90, what, 91? She just made 91 on Monday. Hey, when I tell hey, you hey. she's the spunkiest, smartest, <laughs> coolest, like most knowledgeable person I've ever met in my life. And literally she used to tell me, show me pictures of back in the day where she had a big afro and cute little top on and, and short leather skirt. And she would go pick up money from buildings that she owned. She was oh. a property manager. And oh. so when I first like started coming to their house and I would like talk to her grandma mother who I think is my silver fox you know <laughs> um, she would tell us all these stories about oh yeah I had to go do this at the building I had to go here and do this at the building I'm like what you talking about what building? Right. What build? so I kind of feel like sometimes yes you can read a million books and still have that like paralysis analysis paralysis yeah. kind of things so it's like what book do I listen to what do I do now yeah but we actually have somebody in our circle but it's like, yeah, girl, y'all can do that. And y'all can still look cute. Mm -hmm. And y'all can still mean your business. Mm -hmm. And she, I mean, literally still owns buildings to this day. That's, that's what's that's amazing. So, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Um, but to circle back to your question, in terms of mindset, I feel like now I'm getting really into reading more books about mindset and um, like the 5 a.m. club and, and all that, even though mine is more like 545. <laughs> but, um, you know, just trying to like really embody like what success looks like, mm -hmm. in, you know, for me um, yeah. in this new phase or season of my life as a investor, as an entrepreneur, um, as somebody who is transitioning out of just that, I've been that corporate mindset for so yeah. long, right? Yeah. It's, it's completely different way of thinking yeah. um i think from a like motivational perspective um i guess until you said that i honestly didn't even think about it. it's like duh right yeah. but oh. it's like mm. you're i was raised by my you know primarily by my mom and my grandmother so it's like that's maybe just like subconsciously in my yeah. mind but i didn't it doesn't really like stand out to me like it, it did for you right yeah um but i do remember going with my grandmother sometimes and we had to go to some of her so she used to own like um she worked for a property management company mm. and then she also owned some single family homes in inglewood in chicago and i remember just like one one tenant in particular, she always has some some mess going on. <laughs> and I remember like going in, and like you said, picking up written checks sometimes. We had to go and like meet a plumber or something like that. And you know, I'll just be in the car and um, I never really thought too much about it. It's just it it's, I had no choice. Right. You, you got <laughs> what your grandma said. You gonna have to do. You gonna get in this car. You gonna sit here until I come out. Like, yeah. It is what it is, right? Yeah. Um, but also just talking about full circle moments. So. Um, after college, my first job, I worked for a construction company, um, and I was a I started as a executive assistant, and then I moved up to marketing coordinator. Okay. And I was so excited, like, oh, I'm about to be doing all these RFPs and you know writing all these proposals for the city. All this hated it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did get to meet the mayor and stuff like that, but I worked for a, a black woman owned concrete construction company. It was only a handful of black owned construction companies in the city of Chicago at that time. I don't know who's running things mm -hmm. now, yeah. but this was my first job out of high, out of high school, out of college. Um, I randomly met the owner in a Starbucks and we just started chatting and she told me to like come to her office one day. So I did okay. that for about three years. Mm -hmm. um, and then I made the decision that, you know, I wanted a sexier job and I wanted to do marketing. I knew I looked like marketing. I didn't know what that really looked like, right. but I knew I wanted to do something entertainment. So that's when I decided to move to LA about 10 years ago. Um, and then I started working for a studio. Um, and then now, fast forward, now I'm doing working with construction companies and doing real estate and doing, yeah, right? And it's right. like, I wonder what my life would have been like if I would have Ch chosen path. this path, right? right? Mm. Almost, uh, we, we ain't gonna say how many years. We ain't gonna say how many years. <laughs> 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 a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> a little while back. Okay. Well, when you say you were picking up rent checks, I was like, damn, picking up rent checks? <laughs> 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 like, we started counting. No. Like, all right, yeah, I'll fuck no, back. Don't, don't, don't do too much math. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I got a couple takeaways from that, like, for a while, actually. So, one, uh, I was actually thinking that you guys said you want to come up with a way to support black women. I really like that you went the economical approach, mm -hmm. you know, because um, 
<laughs> not to step on any toes, but it's cool for like women to be like, you go girl, like you got it, you yeah. you that sis, you know, <laughs> whatever. But then it's like with no education, with no information, it's like you got all this motivation and then right. nothing not, not to do with it, right. no vehicle for that. So that's really cool. But then also when you mentioned that you met the owner um, and she was a black woman, I thought that was really cool too because I have this whole thing about um, owners of companies or people that could really put you on, they don't always, you know, like I've heard of, uh, I had a friend who like got a job because the owner was like, you remind me of myself, but they were mm. both white. I was like, well, I never would have met him and reminded him mm, of himself. Of himself. Right. Be, you know what I mean? So it's right. like, it's cool that a black woman was able to see you. Like she probably was like, that's a smart young black girl. Like, you know what? Like, yeah. let me see what I could do with her. So it's like, I love that. At the end of the day, like that cornerstone of economics, it always bleeds through. You know what I mean? We always need to circle back to that mm. because our community has so much skill, so much talent. Right. I, I'm That's sure true. most people know by now that black people could do anything. You know, not to say anybody else can't. I just mean like we're yeah. so gifted. But without that, those resources to really like do what we need to do, mm -hmm. we've just been stagnant. Yeah. So I really love how you guys let what you're about be. Uh, through real estate, and then also what we've known to be the greatest wealth driver in history. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right. And to that point, um, real estate is so encompassing of so many things. Yes, we buy buildings, but our attorney is a black woman. Our realtor is a black woman. We know appraisers. We know painters. We mm -hmm. know all these women right. in trades that are black women. And there are so many ways to make money in real estate. So, yes, we buy buildings, right? But we want to encourage you to go appraise those buildings. Exactly. We want to, you to go inspect those buildings. We want you to go put the plumbing in those buildings, right? Mm -hmm. We can all do something in this space to, you know, elevate ourselves and elevate these conversations in our own communities. Yeah. yeah. And it's important. Um, one thing that I, I was thinking about just, just listening to you guys is so important, uh, especially when you're talking about just, uh, you know, providing something for the next generation, mm -hmm. you know, your, your nieces and nephews, like to have that example, to see like, Oh my, 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 you know, my auntie owns buildings. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? My grandma owned these buildings and yeah. like how, those little itty bitty nuggets just trickle down and they become something amazing. Like Absolutely. you, none, you understand that like, oh, I'm capable of this. Not only am I capable of it, but I'd have people in my life that have done this. Before. Right. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like that's a whole different ball game. I think AD and I were talking like, it's different when you, you set out for a goal and you're over there striving for it. It's easy to get, uh, um, so where I'm looking for, but it's easy to get discouraged. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, until hard, you see, distracted, yeah, you know, distract anything, yeah. any of those things. But when you see somebody who who's not only in your position but has excelled in your position, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You're like, oh my gosh, like I can do this, yeah. like, and I have somebody here who's done this. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, I I'm I'm capable. You Absolutely, know? So. and I think that's something we're trying to instill even in younger girls. Right? We're doing a conference. We're speaking at a conference next year, and the target is young black women. You know, young girls. What if they're eight to ten years old? What if they're in high right. school? Right? What if they're just out of college? This is the perfect time for them to start learning trades. Look at the first. I remember this like it was yesterday. The first time I picked up a hammer, I was eight years old mm. with my mom. Uh -huh. She was very handy dandy, and she wanted to. Um, change the runner on her stairs. And I'm like, mom, I'll help you, mm. right? So I took this hammer and I'm start prying it off. And, you know, she's like, I've never seen a young girl do this before. You know, and I would <laughs> ask my friends, like, y'all don't help your moms with the nails and screws and stuff. Y'all don't have those little things with that open with the, no? My mom that? doesn't have those. Yeah. <laughs> right. And to me, it's like, oh, I thought this was normal. I mm. thought, you know, I did it in my house. So I thought other people were doing this. And it's like, okay, no, we can clearly see that there's just some disparities and a lot of just the task and activities and things that we just do in families mm -hmm. that change, you know, change minds and change perspectives. That's Definitely. cool. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So uh, I want to switch gears a little bit and get back onto the uh, buildings. Yeah. So currently, what does your portfolio kind of look like, uh, either individually or collectively? Yeah, so we are actually in the process of selling one of our buildings right okay. now. Lord, just take it. <laughs> is it a problem building? It, oh, it is. It is a. a it is a problem child. Problem. Yes, <laughs> it is a little rascal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, but we own what is it? Maybe six. 
things collectively, mm-hmm. five or six things collectively. Um, I actually bought a piece of land in Memphis randomly at an auction. Okay. Um, and then we have a couple of multifamilies, um, a single family, and then a condo. So Okay. Yeah. Cool. So we're just trying to build up our portfolios. What we're going to transition into, though, is more commercial multifamily. Okay. So we really want to get into 15, 20, 25 unit uh, okay, buildings. Um, and so we're really taking the steps to, of course, learn more about that, but also, again, build a team that can handle those types of buildings. So, right, right. Um, so yeah, we're we're taking steps and we are learning so much and networking like crazy and just the, I don't know if it's the universe. I don't know if it's just like our prayers being answered, but we've had so much opportunity mm-hmm. in these past couple of months and just putting ourselves out there and like taking a stand for ourselves and sure. the shit is like an avalanche. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean... It's a combination of multiple things. It's you guys putting yourselves out there and it's like God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you putting yourself out there is what's making the opportunities come. Yeah. If you weren't doing anything, you'll be like, oh, there's no opportunity. No. It's like the opportunity is abound. Your work ethic isn't. <laughs> you know, so that's what it is. But um, no. uh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was listening. I was agreeing. <laughs> go ahead. Was- <laughs> but um, also, so you said you want to get into the 15 to 20 unit yeah. multifamily. Do you guys know where you're looking at specifically or what sort of metrics do you look at to decide where you want to invest? So we're currently um, still looking in Chicago. So most of our properties are in Chicago, minus a couple in Houston where my name lives. And oh, I, I say my name. Yeah, we're, not to confuse people. Yeah, <laughs> she, she's my name. That's I'm her name. Uh, so, oh, yeah, so. that's, and, that's how we know. Yeah, <laughs> it, our families call us that too. My mom's yeah. like, your name called. <laughs> Thanks, girl. Okay. Um, but yeah, so sh- Chicago is our our main hub. I mean, we're both from Chicago, so we know the city mm-hmm. like the back of our hand. Mm-hmm. Um, we have most of our sh- support systems in Chicago. So it's easy if I can't go view something, like I can call my dad or my brother or, you know, my mom will do a drive by or something like that. Um, But the amount of work that we have put into these two to four unit buildings, it's like we could be doing this times 10. Right. Right. Um, The same amount of work. Like. and probably it, less work. Probably less <laughs> work. Yeah. Um, and, and have a greater return, right? And um, one of the conferences that we went to, they were talking about, like, the guy was like, if, if I can't 10 exit, I don't want it, right? So that's kind of been our mm-hmm. new thinking philosophy. Like, as we look at these deals, right, it's like, okay, if, if this is not going to 10x us, right, and that can be from a monetary standpoint, like, how much are we investing versus what is the return on that? This can be, you know... What, what access is, is this going to gain us, right? So I think going back to your mindset, right, thinking about, like, things just in a whole different way than before. Before, it was like, I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to be here. Like, I own the building. I'm just happy to be here. Like, yeah. You know, but, but now that we have created this as a business, right, now I have to start thinking about it from a business perspective yeah. and making decisions you know, as a business person and not just like, yeah, I'm a black girl that buys buildings, but also I'm trying to expand my portfolio. I'm trying to, you know, share the knowledge that I'm getting because we're learning stuff every day, right? We're learning all this stuff about like SEC and, you know, as we are thinking about expanding and it's like, okay, how do we get, ultimately I want to get to buying a hundred unit buildings, right? Mm. I don't have that kind of capital. Oh, like at right? a time. Yeah, okay. like at a time, I like right? I like that. I don't have that kind of capital. So, okay, what? how do we get there, right? So then it's learning about accredited investors versus non-accredited investors. Mm-hmm. You know, what What needs to, how, how the business needs to be structured in order to, to do that. And all of these things that I didn't even know, like, existed, right? I don't know. You don't know what you don't know, right? right. So it's like we're learning about all this and we're meeting people that are doing these things. Like, we had a call the other day, a woman... Black woman attorney reached out to us and said, like, I love what you guys are doing. Hey, Elizabeth, girl. Like, hey, Elizabeth. <laughs> um, I love what you guys are doing. And um, I would love to put some time in your calendar just to, like, see if we have synergies, whatever, right? Come to find out she's a SEC, I'm sorry, SEC attorney. Right. Like, wow. that's what she does. And, and she I, lives in Chicago. And she lives in Chicago. Wow. And, I'm, and, <laughs> and she's partnered with one of the people Somebody that, that we're, we're trying, trying to partner, partner with. with. <laughs> I mean, come like, on. It's like, that's <laughs> our yeah. connecting, right? Yeah. Everything, uh, like, yeah. talk about alignment. Like, yeah. I think that's been our word 
is alignment. Yeah, mm. absolutely. I like I like the fact that you guys, you know, once you once you get to the party and you own your buildings mm -hmm. and you know you're already there, you're happy, but then you're like, okay, now how can I take What's over? What's next? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like what is going on next? Like how can we really be a player in this game? Yeah. You know I mean? And our thing is once we own those buildings and we, you know, get our reserves together, once we make sure that the tenants are okay and we get our property management together, right? That can take a couple months process, but yeah. in that time, we're still making sure we're learning. We're still making sure we're saving. We're still making sure that we're building connections because once we're ready, it's off to the races. It mm, ain't no part. stopping in between. Let me hesitate. Let me think about this. It's like, baby, we've been thinking about this. Mm. We've just been putting some other stuff in place so that when we do make our next step, it's on and popping. Right. <laughs> right. right. That's right. what's up. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. So um, another thing I was hearing, so it sounds like you guys are going to get into the raising money space. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Crowdfunding. No DJ and Envy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep it real. We've been, Look. we've had so many conversations lately. Yeah. And yeah. As we're, again, talking about crowdfunding and talking about, uh, you know, accredited versus unaccredited investors, setting up our business the right way, making sure that we have a team that are professional left that they can can talk to our investors that they okay. can you know share that knowledge or, or you know share that nomenclature right, right. Mm -hmm. um there are some investors that like have millions of dollars that they want to spend on us but if we don't know the lingo if we don't know the nomenclature if we don't have the team behind us they're gonna yeah. be like girls exactly. y'all are cute but right about your day <laughs> um, so yeah just like getting into a space where you know a hundred unit building we literally met five or six men last month that own 200 units mm -hmm. right. so why can't we right. right why can't you why can't we right that's cool that's cool so then also uh currently who's all on the team is it just the two of you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, of, of course so, we have our, you know, our yeah. team, our, our realtor, yes. our lawyers, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, project um, property managers, you know, things like that. But it's it's me and baby girl right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bugging it out. Okay. Bugging it out. Yeah, right. we're, we're looking for an assistant if you guys want to come. Yes. That's cool. Come hey, in. They want an assistant. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bill, Holly. come on. Okay. That's awesome. Um I think that's, I had a question, but I, I'm so forgetful. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> but um, that's pretty dope. So it's only you two rocking so far for now. Yeah. Um. So my next question would be, uh, you know, you guys have your personal goals ab about getting more real estate. Mm -hmm. So what about your goals about like the, the education piece that you guys are pushing out? Like what yeah. are your guys' long-term goals in regards to that? Yeah, so that's actually a good question. I'll uh, answer a little and you can go mm -hmm. ahead. Um, so we're actually working on a couple of things. Um, privately, we're working on the children's book, right? Literally, I have nieces that's like, oh, auntie, can I go with you? Or, you know, I, I put on my little overalls and they're like, oh, what you wearing? What you doing? What you, right. why do you have that hammer with you? <laughs> so we're working on a series of children's books that are basically like, look, my auntie is a investor and I want to be a young black girl to buy buildings like my aunt, mm -hmm. right? So we're working on those things. Um, we're working on a, I don't know, a game. I don't know of, if you want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll we'll see how much, you, yeah. how much tea was going to drop. We're putting it out there. Yeah. Yes, yes, this is the yes. this is where we're manifesting what yeah. we're doing, yes. right. right? So we're working on the game right now that we will be introducing during the conference that we speak at, just to kind of you know work the kinks out. Um, but in terms of more education piece, we have ebooks, we have webinars, we have you know we're working on a meet and greet, right? Mm -hmm. There are just so many opportunities for us to talk to women, and so the education piece is like, yeah, we'll put a million things out there for you to go read and learn and view, um, but what you gonna do about it? Right. right? Right. That's the that's the biggest thing is like I can give you everything you want to do, but how are you going to follow up with me? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That's mm -hmm. that's the next step. Or how are you going to follow up with that lender? Or how are you going to yeah. follow up? Right. So, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, oh, no, my video got cut short. It's all good. Shout out to Black Girls by Buildings, Nia Randall and Nia Hall. Make sure to follow them on their social media handles at Black Girls by Buildings. Remember, be you and be uncommon.